this is Pat Harris. Welcome to part three of the Final Cut Pro uh, basic training tutorials. In this section, we will cover audio and video tracks, linking, stereo pairs, and peaking. All right, so now you know how to edit, but the tracks can be kind of confusing. On the upper half of the timeline are video tracks, hence V1, and the lower half is audio tracks and A1 through 4. When you bring in a clip, and actually by default it has one video track linked to two other audio tracks. This is because most cameras record in stereo, so you have a left and right channel audio, which means two channels. But if you're recording with the HVX, which can have up to four uh, channels of audio at once, you may have four different audio tracks here for the internal microphone and external microphones. So this can get kind of messy if you uh, don't know what you're doing or what's what. If I were to bring this up just a little bit, it will create a new video track. And it didn't create any more audio track because by default there is, it started with four audio tracks. If I bring this up again, it'll make even another video track and you can keep going and going, you know, up to like a hundred video tracks I think it is, or it might be unlimited. I don't know, but you can have more video uh, tracks than you will probably ever need. and you will probably use a lot of the audio tracks if you're doing more complicated things. So, this clip itself right now will stay together. The audio will stay with the video and you'll be fine, it's linked together. That is what this is over here. This is a linked section. So, if you were to hit Shift L, now you click on the video, you're unlinked. But, I mean, this can be a problem if you have audio that people are talking and it's synced up, but sometimes you have a lot of footage where you don't want the audio, in which case this will be helpful just to delete the audio track and now you just have video. What you were seeing there, see this plus uh, 118? That's the difference of how far it's off. If you split something up and then bring them back over top of each other, it'll show you where it originally was. See, this is six seconds uh, and 22 frames one way, and this is six seconds and 22 frames the other way, so if we move it, six seconds and 22, 23, it's not gonna let me do that. All right, well you'll see six seconds and eight frames, now it's 14 frames off, it'll tell you, which is nice. And then you can always link it back. It's linked, but it's linked off, as you can see that this extends a little bit further. That can be very helpful, and then see now these will move together up and down to kind of avoid other things. Another thing, to know about linking and video and audio tracks is what's called stereo pairs. This audio right now is unlinked from the video, so I can move it independently, but these two tracks are still locked together because they came in as a stereo pair. So if I had the left channel was higher for some reason than the right channel, I wanted to lower the left channel, um, I can't do that. If you want to change the volume of a clip or easily, or if you want to change the opacity of, of a video track easily, or clip actually, all you need to do is go down here and click this button, which is clip overlays, or you can use the hotkey, which is option W. And basically see that brought up a line right here, and this is the opacity, so we can bring that down and now cut darker. Or here's the um, decibel levels for the audio. Now, if you had a left channel that was louder, and you wanted to um, make it quieter, you can't do just the left channel. You see they're linked together and you can't just select one track because when you imported this, it imported it together as a stereo pair. Uh, to change that, you just click on it and go to modify and stereo pair, which is the short key is option L. So now they're, now they're paired and now they're not paired. So now if you click away from it, you can click on it, and now look, just the one channel is selected and I can independently raise and lower that, which is great, especially if you're using the HVX. You can have four channels of audio, all with different uh, microphones attached that you need to uh, adjust the levels independently. After you change the volume of one, you can, oh, let's make that really low. You can select them both and option L, link them back together, and now they are linked. As you can see, these two little arrows here shows that they are linked. And if we hit option L again, those arrows will go away. Those little two arrows right there. And then we can link it back up to the video and say you want to move it off a little bit. Apple L, and that's linked up. All right. 
That's the basic of linking and unlinking audio and video and stereo pairs. Another thing that you need to know about audio is peaking. Peaking is very important because if something is peaking audio wise, it's going to sound awful. It's going to sound distorted. I'll show you. Uh, let's just import a quick sound file here. Let's go to um, go here. All right, this will work. So I've imported a uh, sound file that I worked on a while ago. It's kind of long, but now we will play it. And see, over, right over here, here's your peaking. See, it's coming close to the red, but it's not quite red. If we were to raise this up a little bit, now it, you can see it sounds very, very distorted. You want to avoid this, and sometimes uh, it can be due to the fact that when footage was recorded, it was recorded at too loud of a volume and you need to bring it down, but it still might plateau or peak. The waveform still might be distorted, so sometimes you have to live with it. But basically you do not, you want to watch, when you finally watch your final thing, you want to make sure you pay attention to your peaking levels because if something peaks, it might not sound bad in Final Cut, but when you export it, it most likely will. Okay, and now as far as video tracks go, another thing that is nice about video tracks is we can layer tracks on top of each other, which can be very helpful with editing because, well, this is the same clip. Let's not use the same clip. Let's use, say this clip, and we brought it right over top. We can cut it, and then we can just kind of drag it over, and now we can kind of cut back and forth between these two very easily and say, ah, we want this clip to come in a little bit earlier. Okay, and now we can, we can do that which is nice. Um, another thing you can do with this is you can change the um, composite mode, which this is kind of like Photoshop. If you've used Photoshop at all, there's a bunch of different modes and it's basically how they will go on top of each other. If you go to multiply, it kind of just takes the blacks and makes them darker. Um, there's a bunch of different settings. The best thing to actually learn them all is you just take some clips and go through them and see what they do. Uh, some of it's much more helpful when doing graphics because, you know, it's nice to kind of screen sometimes or do an overlay of, you know, a nice graphic. Um, if it's a white graphic, it'll just kind of overlay on top, you know, graphic elements, not the text in particular. And then you can pile them on top of each other. And now, look, it's one on top of each other. It looks kind of funky, but there's a bunch of different composite mode settings that you can play through and go through. Um, that and you can bring the opacity back and forth here and now it's kind of in between each other all right well that's it for part three make sure you check out part four of the final cut training tutorials where we will cover basic effects color correction transitions titles and keyframing thanks for watching be sure to check out rtn at rtnch5.tv where you can watch live programming and make sure you check out my site, cinematicdslr.com.